All right, in this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, excited to be talking to an individual set to compete at Unified MMA 51 in the headline attraction, which goes down on June the 23rd. And the interim Bantamweight title is going to be on the line when Eric Shelton gets into the cage against Tisha Guthrow. And great having Tisha on the show. How's everything going, man? You having a solid day so far? Yeah, I'm busy there. Well, already. Yeah, and when did you get word that you would, you know, be on this card? This seems to be a big one. I mean, Unified MMA always on UFC Fight Pass, which is a great platform, but just a big event seemingly in Niagara Falls, Ontario, and just being a big part of that Niagara top team fold. Like, when did you initially get the bout offer for this one? Um, I think April, because, like, they're supposed to have a card in April that I was supposed to fight on, and then uh, got canceled because UFC was having a fight the same day, so they canceled it. And then right then and there, they're like, well, we're coming to Niagara in June, so... Let's get it. Yeah, and I mean, it's an awesome card, like I said, close proximity to where you normally train at and everything. It seems to be, you know, good representation across the card. Some familiar names all throughout, just people who train in that southern Ontario area, like Cody Chovanchuk on the card there, and seeing some other names like Bobby Poulter and, you know, Tom Theo Karras and everything. So it really seems like good representation of, like, the up-and-coming Ontario guys and all. Yeah, Yeah, no doubt, man. And, I mean, this seemed to be something you were kind of mapping out a bit even the last time we were talking, just getting some form of, you know, Bantamweight gold going and everything like that, and this one being for the interim, you know, Bantamweight championship. So how excited were you when that component was kind of put out there to you, the fact that there'd be a strap on the line here? Well, like I expected a strap. I wasn't too excited. I kind of demanded it. I was like, I was supposed to fight for the strap my first unified fight, but no always little bitch, and um, keep saying no. So, this one I was like, yeah, making an interim or fucking, like, what's the point? Just, not even for the strap, I just want to go five rounds. Yeah, just in terms of getting that next, you know, set of experiences in your career and getting more familiarized with that. Yeah, and it's a fight. I just need a fight, and it's been too long. And that's interesting because I feel like the last couple of times we've talked, you've been saying that this Noah Ali fight is one you've been trying to get going and everything, and hasn't really panned out like do you think this could you know be a situation where you win this title and then it gets upgraded to a lineal title like do you see Ali eventually fighting you at a later point in the year or maybe not so hopeful because it seems like some past instances have been kind of scuttled as it were nah he's soft as fuck I expect me to win this KO this guy and then win the UFC that's what that's what my that's what my manifestation has been I don't want to fight no more regional. I'm time, it's time to get paid and fuck around with the big boy. You know what I mean? These guys are just stepping stones. Well, this guy's a big fucking big name, right? Yeah, well, I was going to say, like, in that context of wanting to vault yourself to the UFC, I mean, this guy being a former UFC vet, I think it could serve that master for you for sure. Yeah. Uh, that's why um, we said yes. What? And because no one else was down to fight, so fuck, we had to fight someone. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, and I mean, like you said, I feel like you're, I mean, no disrespect to anyone on the regional scene, but I feel like you're very much at that level with some of the other, you know, NTT compatriots like Jasmine, Jazz Divisius, and Aaron Jeffrey, and different people fighting for, you know, promotions like UFC and Bellator and stuff like that. So I get what you're saying. Definitely like a long time coming for sure. Yeah exactly how I feel. And yeah, some great work to be had with NTT consistently, no doubt, but kind of wanted to get some insights into some late February Las Vegas work we seem to be getting. I saw some picks with like Marab Devalishvili and Patchy Mix. Can you talk about what that experience was like there? Oh, that was fucking, that was the best, man. I blew my confidence right up. Patchy Mix has been my boy from like five, six years ago. We grew up on the amateur scene and then like he turned pro pretty quick um because we fought out king of the cage a lot right 
so we would always see each other and shit. So it was good to train with him. Now he's a million dollar man, bantamweight champ. Um, fucking, I got to get good rounds with him, Marab, and um, fuck, Phil Marab was great because he's what number two in the world. Like if that's the best in the world, it's fucking very achievable. You know what I mean, because like we sparred, but fuck, I don't. He shows up game day. I fight a show game day. Look, I got my money on myself. Anyone, any fucking one, though, right? But it was good to get that confidence, because, like, just to feel them and see what the highest level is, I'm like, it's nice. Yeah, that's cool. Probably, like, imparts a certain level of confidence. And like you said, I mean, a good way to gauge kind of where you're at on that global level. It seemed like it really served that. Yeah, no, for sure. I will be the best in the world one day. That's what it kind of just cemented in my mind. Like, I already knew it. And they just, just be on that level. You know what I have to do to be able to come the best. I'm, a, I'm already doing it. Yeah, and just you love to see it. I mean, it seems like, I mean, I feel like we always talk about this, but I still just love the story of how Niagara top team seems to continue to, like, rise in prominence just from, like, the days in the basements to, like, the seemingly, like, ever-growing awareness of it, like, week to week, event to event. Yeah, it's fucking crazy, to be honest. I was um, just watching some of the one video of Jazz and all of us going down in the basement for uh, one of the UFC film crews. And the clock is just crazy. Now we're doing what we're doing now. And I mean, great tears to the gym in general. Like, I mean, obviously it's great. Like some of the aforementioned names I rattled off there who are where they're at in their development. But it seems like there's like a real, you know, communal support dynamic for even some of the guys <clears throat> like on the come up and stuff like that. Like it, like it seemed like you were cornering Kevin Visser for his you know, very short notice, like two hours notice fight that he had kind of recently and like just some of the stuff with like Muay Thai provincials and, you know, people competing for like thick boy promotions, like some of the rising kind of younger talent. So how does it feel to kind of like be part of that communal culture and sort of be there to, you know, help guide those guys as you grow in your own efforts there? Man, it feels great. Um, D-Marks put me in a Cody in charge of the Muay Thai team. Because we both fall a lot, like amateur kickboxing, Muay Thai, and like just coaching in general gives me much more respect for the game. Makes me think deeper. I fucking love coaching. Like you said, Kevin Visser. Um, I think I was doing a private, and he was like training Saturday, and he comes up to me. He's like, "Yo, he's like, they need a C class, 55." I'm like, "Go check the weight, 55." I'm like, "Okay." I'm like, "Fucking drive up there, go make weight, and we're fighting." I made the call and I called D Marks and D Marks was like, "Yeah, man, if anyone can do it within an hour's notice, it's Vista, because he's been with us for like five years now. So he says he's gonna make it soon. Uh, turn over to MMA too. We got we got killers coming up, man. Like we got some sixteen year olds that are just assassins. Like, fuck, the come up is gonna be crazy. Like, we're we're coming up. I, I'm, I feel I'm getting older in this game. We're looking at these youngins. I'm like, oh my god." It's going to be crazy. Canada's going to be put back on the map if they haven't been after last weekend. Yeah, and it really does kind of have that, you know, feel. I felt like it was a big weekend in general. Like, there was a good BFL car that segued into, obviously, like a big UFC event that took place. And, I mean, the talent has very much always been there, but it feels like the spotlight is finally getting sort of put back on Canada. And it seems like everyone's, like, really out there and performing in a big way. So definitely something I love to see, and I would think that you share in that sentiment, too. Yeah, I know it's great. Just big things coming. Kind of big things have came and gone. Just keep pushing forward. Like Josh said uh, in our one interview, we, we win and we move on and then we fucking keep keep grinding, right? Like, it's just one win, one big night, and then on to the next one. That's all it is. It's just a journey. Just keep staying, like, focused and poor. Like, after I beat this guy, it's just a little step. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Keep yourself grounded and kind of ready for whatever happens next. But kind of in talking about your opponent here, like, it seems like a guy you were very much aware of when the offer came your way, just having been on that 24th season of the Ultimate Fighter and some notable names on the resume like Jared Brooks and Alessandro Pantoja, Tim Elliott, etc. And definitely 
a good amount of experience. So was there a level of excitement when the bout offer initially came your way? I guess I got the kind of vibe from what you were saying that you like very much knew this opponent when the offer came your way. No, actually I didn't know him at all. Never heard of him. Um, I just knew he was a UFC vet. D. Marks messaged me. He's like, yo, let's take this guy. He said yes. I was like, he said, just watch him quick. He broke down how he, how he thinks I can beat him. And I watched him and they called. That's exactly how I beat him. And then uh, I was just excited because I got a fight, to be honest. And he's a UFC vet, so I know once I start him, we're in. Everything he's done, like in his career, is great and all that, but I'm just going to take it off of him. Fucking, now it's my time. You know what I mean? It's like, excite. It's, it's like hard to be excited. Like right now, I'm not really that excited just because I'm fucking tired, man. You know what I mean? It's been a long camp. I'm ready to fight. Just, nah. Like this week is usually the week where I'm just chilling, calm, relaxed, trying to get over the last hard week. Um, when I got the fight, I wasn't excited about the opponent. It was more just I can fight and hurt someone. It's been seven months, you know? Yeah, I was going to say it's been quite a bit since the last time we talked. Like, I mean, as of this recording, it's been like around six months since that last fight against Morgan Rhines and everything like that. So, yeah, I guess it's one of those things where you're just looking to get out there and show what you've been working on, too, and whatnot. Yeah. Well, I just... It's going to be just nice to get back in there. Show the world what I've been working on. Show my striking. They haven't seen it in a while, so nice to put that out there. He thinks they can't strike, but he's about to find out. I was going to say, I feel like anyone that's like been watching your fights, though, has really you know, seeing that progression in your striking, not that it was ever in, like, a bad way necessarily, but it seems like it's really become, like, more and more prevalent through your fights and just, like, what you're doing to ramp up the skills. Does that almost embolden a certain level of confidence? Because it's like, I feel like the people watching you can see the growth in the striking and how, you know, demonstrably effective it's been, especially in conjunction with, like, the wrestling base that you have to kind of work around with that so does that impart a certain level of confidence is it like a chip on the shoulder thing almost like oh, i'll show you buddy like yeah very much i just want to fucking i'll show everyone so um, i'm just confident man my skills and my abilities i like the difference i think between me and anyone is i go in there willing to take your head off and if i get caught i get caught but i ain't stressing so i can stay calm I mean, win or lose, I'm fucking happy. Like, I'm happier, obviously, if I win, but if I get knocked the fuck out, it's not the end of the world. The thing that makes me different than other people, I ain't stressed about that type of shit, I ain't thinking about that. I'm okay with whatever happens, but trust me, I'm gonna catch him. Yeah, do you have a particular, like, visualization of when that would transpire? Like, is there a certain ending sequence or a juncture in the fight you see this one getting wrapped up in or not so much like more just be fluid and adaptable with whatever may happen um i'll be fluid and adaptable but i can see myself landing a flying in the third or fourth i've been catching them in sparring against high level guys so i can see that that's what i'm envisioning that's what i've been practicing and that's what i've been doing fucking since how many fights now i've been throwing flying in. and usually when i throw them they land I haven't put anyone out with them, but I'm going to put this one out. I'm going to throw it with Yeah, definitely an exciting proposition. That could be a cool sequence to see end the fight or just to see in the fight in general. But it's always good getting to talk to you ahead of these different fights. I was actually... It was kind of funny. I was noticing that it was like a bit over like four years since we've been doing interviews after that pro debut at btc six so yeah it's been uh it's been a little bit of doing these for sure and i always appreciate you making some time man but just wanting to be mindful of your time and everything is there maybe any final parting thought you'd want to add as we're kind of wrapping up tj uh no man i just yeah you're right i appreciate it i think you're the first one to interview me right after my pro debut um fucking always appreciate it man um, just tune in UFC Play Pass or come watch in the fall Scotia Center, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, fucking hell of a night. Got all the boys fighting. 
motivated more than ever, best shape. Um, my mindset's phenomenal. Body's great this week, like no bumps or bruises. I had my last sparring last Thursday, and fucking, I was taking people out, finishing. Um, I was gonna spar this Thursday, but nah, I'm good. I'm physically and mentally bulletproof. Just tune in, and then we're gonna, that's it, we're gonna finish him, and the big show. I don't even want a contender. I just want the big fucking show. And that's it. I mean, I think winning some hardware and the biggest, one of the bigger, if not the biggest shows in Canada could definitely, you know, serve that. And very excited for Unified MMA 51 and stoked to check things out on June the 23rd there. But until then, you have a good rest of your night, man. And yeah, thanks so much for the time again. No, thank you, brother. I appreciate it.